In this video, we're gonna talk about all of the new AI updates inside DaVinci Resolve 20. Real quick, you're watching BP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors, Blackmagic, Vue, and Lucidlink for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And now, back to the video. All right, so I'm here with Sean at Blackmagic. Sean, good to see you uh, in person this you. time, not virtual. Um, so yeah, I wanna talk about the Resolve 20 updates. There are a lot, I kind of, hearing them felt like they kind of grouped into three buckets that maybe we can talk about. Uh, AI assistant editing tools, kind of podcast social media creation, mm. and then like kind of just quality of life speed improvements. So uh, one of the first features in the AI bucket is the uh, IntelliScript. Uh, so can you kind of walk me, what, what is the IntelliScript yeah, feature? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, IntelliScript is great because uh, whether you're provided a script in advance that matches the dialogue for this clip, uh, or you simply use the transcription tools in Resolve mm -hmm. to export one, if I export through my transcription, and then I've already exported one, so I'm simply gonna show you the function. I right click over here, and we're gonna go in and use the uh, AI tools, and we're gonna choose to create new timeline using IntelliScript. Mm -hmm. It's going to prompt me for where that script is, okay. and since it matches, there's A005. And we're the script doesn't have that. to have any special formatting or anything. Exactly, it can be a plain text file as we just exported. Um, the only thing that it's going to do is, essentially, it's ignoring the, the speaker identification that might be in the previous transcription. Okay. And as long as the dialogue is on alternating lines, this is going to work just fine. So let's open that. And you'll see what it just did in my timeline. It okay. actually cut every first take down on video one and audio one. And then the where this, uh, this interview actually included multiple takes, it's created the multiple takes that it thinks it should have from that transcription, moved them to additional tracks, V2, V3, and then just muted them. Uh -huh. So your workflow would be, you know, in review, it's play it back. Do I do I appreciate this as the take that I really want to see? Um, you know, if if I do, great. I can leave it alone. But if I don't, well, then you know I can just toggle between the the clip that I want to see and just you know mute the other track right now. And of course, the rest of this is the polish, which is you know up to the human editor. All right. So here's our alternate take, right? So if, if the AI made the right decision, then we just leave the original there. But okay. you know, if the AI gave us the option and we find that maybe the way that he says something just slightly better in this alternate take, because you know, as, as human beings, that's for us to determine, right? Yeah. You know, the AI is gonna get us there most of the way. Um, right, like to, uh, speed up the process. Yeah, it, in the, in the, the common, uh, commonly referred to like 80-20 rule, oh. where you know, 80% of the work gets done very, very quickly, and then there's 20% that's yeah. you know focused and detailed. In this case, it's it's really turned on its side because in about 20% of the time now, you can get 80% of the work accomplished mm -hmm. with these AI assistant tools. Yeah. So let's walk through some of the other AI assistant tools. Uh, we've got there is the AI music editor. Yes. But so just tell me what the uh, the music editor is okay, doing. Okay. So the music editor is looking at the duration of the clip that you've attached uh -huh. it to. You'll see the um, inspector shows the tools like uh -huh. pretty much everything. So when you've enabled that uh, checkbox, you have the ability to override based on a direct uh, uh, input of duration, mm -hmm. right? So say your track is uh, a minute thirty, but you need a sixty second spot. Uh -huh. So you can type in sixty hit enter, it will adjust to 60. The other way to do that is to check, uh, check on the, uh, the little box that mm -hmm. opens something called a live duration adjustment. Okay. So when you check the box for live adjustment, then you can simply use the mouse so or you're the tracking keyboard. It, it's just adjusting the yeah. duration. And, and you've music. taken your you've taken yeah. your 90 second clip and you've dragged it down yeah. to roughly 60, and then the AI processes and creates a 60 second version of it. Now, what it's doing is basically all those you know, skills that you've perfected as an editor over time to figure out where to cut that audio and how to uh -huh. patch it together properly so that it sounds natural. Uh, it's doing that really well and really quickly. Yeah. And, um, and then that becomes a new clip, right? Essentially, it's the new duration clip, but it's now this new, you know, AI So like a new clip. version of your existing clip? It's a new like, version that's just on the timeline. You can then force it, essentially you can break into it if you want. It's kind of like the same thing if you were to do a speed adjustment on a video clip. It's the same video clip, it's just It's the same video clip, speed. it's just metadata that's controlling, uh -huh. you know, what speed we're actually playing it back, right? Yeah. So in that case, once we've changed the duration and it's made some edits automatically that, you know, patch it together, 
um, what you'll find is that you can leave that clip alone and it essentially becomes this, this completely flexible duration clip. Or you can break that clip into its requisite pieces and then you know thus continue to edit. So maybe you've made that 60 second piece of audio but you you want to break it up with you know I don't know you've got a record scratch and you're going to go to the, uh, the, yeah. the classic you know yeah. break the fourth wall and start talking to the camera. Yeah. Well, I bet you're wondering how I got yeah, here, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, and then when you pick up from the rest of that, that scene and you cut the rest of your audio back into the end of your, your piece, uh, so you can break those edits into individual pieces again, but, but typically when you want to leave it alone is when you're still adjusting its duration. Okay, so. and uh, tell me about there's the voice changer. So like, what was the thought process behind kind of the use of that and how it works? You know, I, I couldn't speak to the thought process okay. behind why it was created, um, but I can certainly tell you about how it's working. Yeah. So the, uh, the AI voice changing is basically training a model and um, allows you to find slight replacements based on the, the heard audio, if you will. Uh -huh. So it's, it's analyzing the audio, it's attempting to match all of those attributes of the audio, but then allowing you the ability to change the, you know, change the pitch, uh, change the, the you know the gender existing if you will. audio to a different voice, but you can train it on voices. So is there a like um, with other like online models when you train voices, you have to like read a disclaimer to be like yes, this is me, and I get permission. Is there a permission feature a that permission you have to do based structure to engage that feature to train a model to train the model? Um, you know, this is I don't believe that there's a permission based feature there, but uh, you know, obviously uh, this this. These tools exist, and many people are going to use them, and, and we hope that they that they use them in you know good faith. Yes. Right. Um, and then also, oh, this one was the audio mixing. There is a you do an audio mastered mix. That's correct. So um, it's it's kind of an interesting feature in that it will automatically create and patch tracks for you, name them, and then run through an AI process that. Uh, you know, listens and then makes relative adjustments so that your dialogue against your music tracks, against mm -hmm. your sound effects, uh, even with the option of adding, you know, some fades in between. Are there kind of controls or options of how you want the mix to be? In this case, the very first part of that process is going to happen automatically, mm -hmm. but I feel like the, you know, as we were talking about the 80-20 rule, Again, yeah. we're going to get through the prime, you know, the primary mix uh, and the the checkerboarding and the track labeling and the bus creation, all in the AI audio assistant, uh -huh. and then um, the remaining, you know, tweaking is going to be what, like what the brings out the, tedious stuff the before, details, like moving your tracks and yeah, your all of the tedium are... is really what's being okay. you know removed by the assistant, and then we're still going to look towards the. The human being towards the artist, the yeah. individual yeah. that's making those, you know, specific editorial decisions, right? I mean, you don't want to give up the decision-making process. Yeah. So, um, on the flip side of that, at the end of the Resolve video, there was like a quick demo of AI set extender, and yeah. it was generating an extended set, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it said possibly coming later this year. Do you have any more information about what that's what yeah. that is, and if like also what AI models that is using? It's a it's a feature that found here in the color page, okay. and um, it's it's essentially it works in conjunction with a secondary selection. So as the demo you probably saw included, okay. there was a power window, and the power window so when you focused have your on window, yeah. So we've, we've made a you know we made the power window selection, uh -huh. and we've defined uh, just a region you know of this person, and then at that point we've asked for it to fill in additional okay. you know options from the text prompt window that pops up. Okay. So you'll provide a text prompt based on, I don't know, I guess you'll you'll Google that to find out what the best prompts are All right, sure. to generate. Know. Add a, add a, add the Yeti in the, in the trees the, or something. Okay. Yes, yes, we should add the Yeti in the trees, you know, peeking out from behind the, the tree. But now yes. do you know anything on the under the hood of like, because I'm going to imagine Blackmagic did not train their own uh, AI image generation model. So is it like stable diffusion? Is it some like can you bring your own model? Do you kind of know? I know this is very early. And I'm yeah, it's really early AI in the process. Questions. I'm not. I'm not certain actually about which models you know you all have access to in uh -huh. this early stage. But you know, okay. we did just release the public beta uh, for the show, yeah. so that's a that's a Gen One 
public right. beta and we hope you test it and find out where, um, where it's working. Second grouping of features we had the uh, auto cut. Uh -huh. I'm calling it auto cut. I know it is. Uh, what is the actual name and how does so that? So the IntelliCut. The IntelliCut. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that's another that's another feature that's found in the in the Fairlight page. Or I'm sorry, we have a combo. We have the multicam smart switch and right. the telecut. Right. Okay. So, so a combo of those two. Uh, again, they're they're still editorial tools, yes. right? The the Fairlight is going to take your um, even, even if you were recording, say, just one boom and multiple speakers, it's going to checkerboard those speakers onto separate tracks uh -huh. with the IntelliCut. Okay. And just based on uh, doing the analysis pass on the clip. And then to go back into the edit page to the workflow where the multicam is, in a traditional workflow for, for multicam in the edit page, you'll switch your viewer to the multicam view. And that's actually what will allow you to see all the angles simultaneously. And it's and from it, okay. a multicam in the viewer where you can decide the AI multicam switch of like how aggressively it should switch to what speaker. And I thought it was interesting you could also detect if your tracks weren't assigned it could detect based on mouth movement who is speaking. Yeah, who's switch. actually speaking. Yeah. yeah, if you have like a mixed audio output and not right. isolated Right, if you piece. have mixed audio and not lav mics everywhere. Yeah, yeah. okay, that's very yeah. interesting. And I saw the other update was uh, animated captions. Animated We're captions, getting... yeah. Um, let's see if I've got captions open because that's kind of, that's kind of fun. Um, in fact, let me go back. Yeah, this was always really tough to do and resolve before. To, to, to get captions and animate the text. Yeah, the animated text option is is amazing. So let's just go with timeline and uh, and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and create some subtitles from the audio from this region. Um, oh look, I've just opened up one more feature which is enable extended language support. Okay. Which is in beta right now. Um, and so by default if you're picking through your languages, you have all of the, the languages that we've supported until uh -huh. now. But once we enable the extended language support, you'll find that we've opened up several additional okay. languages that are available here, and including things. And this is just you know, captioning in those languages, not, this, not exactly. This is yeah. So enable extended language support will support all of these additional languages. That's something that you can get when you're in the you know resolve area. The extra downloads manager okay. controls those LLM. Um, subtitle default. Let's go ahead and say let's see some subtitles. And now we need some uh, we need some hold music while we render. Okay. There we go. So with some subtitles, the only thing that we need to do to give the animated um, you know title aspect is go to our titles in the effects window and scroll down to this little area called animated, mm -hmm. and then add one of these over the subtitle track itself. Okay. No. And, oh, then, and, that applies. and then it applies to the track. Okay. So if we just select one of these clips, you'll see that normally its tools open up in the inspector. And we can do a per caption adjustment on all of these features, or we can just do an overall track adjustment. Mm -hmm. So once you've applied that preset, you can decide to change you know, some of the colors. Um, you know, let's go, let's go to a green on this one. And let's make this like a like a purple, okay? So there we go. Beautiful. And as it moves, it calls out, right? This is word highlight. Yeah. And then of course, you know, okay. again, these are just the call outs. The highlight is my are favorite, you, it's very uh, simple. Able to build your own infusion? Well, these are essentially, uh, you know, templatable. So once you open this here in the inspector, uh -huh. if you can see, I've actually got the little fusion button here. Clicking on the fusion button, We'll launch Fusion okay. and we'll show us that template for you know for adjustment. And the template's exposed here, right? You know how you create a template in Fusion, you essentially define what you would like to expose in the tool set. Uh-huh. Uh, once once you and have so you a template that's e yeah, you make your own, save it okay. as a template. Okay. And then and then drag it over. Okay. And then lastly, kind of the whole workflow improvements are our bucket. Uh, we've got a uh, voice recorder built mm -hmm. in. So that was always a really kind of yeah, complicated yeah. to do add a voiceover, but now there's one click button. Right there. Perfect. Right? Voiceover. The yeah. uh, the other one that's one of my favorites that um, I use all the time when I'm when I'm in the edit page especially. Uh, the transform tools are where all the controls are for the zoom and the repositioning, reframing, uh -huh. retiming even, right? But um, 
normally you would expose that in line, right? So on the clip itself, you had something under this area called curve editor. Okay. And so now what we've done is we've essentially just expanded the curve editor to a full keyframe controller. So uh, okay. on That's every one. Our... Yeah, every okay. time I've added a keyframe in this inspector to control an attribute, then I'll see keyframes here and I can control them. There's there's also a keyframe curve editor window. So right now we've got the media pool and the edit effects open, but if I switch one of them to just show this, you can see this is where we control the spline. So much like we do on the Fusion page, we have the duration uh -huh. and the position controlled by this window, and we have the, you know, the quality of the transition in terms yeah. of its Bezier handles, you know, okay. the curves, it's the smooth, the ease. So you might have had to go to the Fusion tab for now. You can kind of do in the edit page. Absolutely, okay. because if you wanted, if you wanted more control in, you know, say edit page transformations, sometimes you would use this on-screen tool that controls the transform, uh -huh. right? As opposed to just these attributes in the transform panel. But what this is giving us now is the ability to essentially use the kinds of transforms from the Fusion page feature sure. set. In here. Okay. In, in here, and we've got a dedicated pair of windows to kind of, you know, use that feature set now. Right. Okay. Where it used to be built into the clip itself, and the clip view, um, Shift C was the old uh, shortcut for that. Right. Open the curve. I would say one of my other favorite like improvements is the source tape mode mm -hmm. is now in the edit page. Source tape in the edit page, which was yeah. in the cut page. I always thought that was really handy and cool, but you can yeah. use it on the cut page. Now it's in the edit. And you can bring a timeline into your source monitor, right? And yeah, exactly. Cool. You can always you can always bring a timeline in there. So that was you know timeline to timeline work has been around for you know for quite a bit. But definitely being able to switch from this view you know into this view, and then the same the same ease of use uh -huh. spread across all of our clips in the bin. Also, easily switch between the sort order, the same yeah, way that we right. can in the cut page. Yeah. So clearly it was it was a great feature in the cut page. You know, it's a great feature now that it's moved to the edit page too. Uh, I find that I, I happen to be in the edit page more often than I'm in cut. Um, but you know, I had a workflow that included the cut page prior to the edit page, primarily so I could use the sort order that was available uh, to the source tape. Yeah. So yeah. I'm uh, certainly one of the happy ones. I know, I was like, happy to see that. <laughs> uh, well, cool, thank you for the updates. The yeah. one thing, so it's kind of mentioned in the presentation, it's a beta right now. Do you know anything about uh, upgrade, if there will be a uh, pricing charge for it, or if it's going to be another free upgrade? Right. This is actually going to be another free upgrade to the you know studio license people, uh, okay. as well as the free version that will exist. So you're going to get a paid studio member, or yeah. you're going to have a paid studio you'll license, the, you'll get version 20. You'll get version 20. Once it's officially out of beta. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can get it now because it's in public beta. It's yes. on our website, so you can download the beta. But not everybody is as you know, bold. To use a beta, but yeah, uh, I, I find it it's been very stable, and we're in its earliest beta version now. So yeah, uh, cool. Well, thanks a lot, Sean. Yeah, thanks my pleasure. Thanks. thanks. And that is it for this video. Thanks again to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And for more of our NAB videos, be sure to check out the playlist right here. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.